first century BC, Imperial Rome dominated the West, Han China the East. A world apart, these two superpowers knew little of each other's existence. The seductive beauty of one substance drew them closer. It all began in Mesopotamia, 53 BC. Roman legions were on the brink of an historic victory against the Parthian army. Unexpectedly, the Parthians unfurled huge banners of a magical translucent material. The Roman army had never seen anything like it and fled in confusion, leaving 20,000 dead on the battlefield. Fear turned to fascination, and silk quickly became the rage in ancient Rome. The Chinese fabric was soon worth its weight in gold. Traders saw their chance. Caravans braved the 5,000 miles separating China and Rome. Cities sprung up in the deserts and plains to service the traders. Along with the goods flowed ideas that revolutionized the cultures along the way. Buddhism and Islam spread eastwards. Printing and papermaking went west. The Silk Road, a pioneering connection between east and west, was established. People have a mental vision that the Silk Road is like I-95, a huge long highway, and that one person took some silk from one end all the way to the other, and in fact that almost never happened. Merchants would take the goods from one oasis to another, and then another group of merchants would take them on. So I think the Silk Road is not the road. I think the most important thing are those communities along the Silk Road. For nearly a thousand years, these communities thrived. In the 10th century, China collapsed in civil war, and it was no longer safe to travel in the East. In the chaos, the Silk Road fell silent. The desert cities that depended on its traffic were abandoned. As shifting sands buried their memory, the link between East and West was broken. Three hundred and fifty years later, in 1254, a young boy named Marco Polo was born in Venice, Italy. Marco grew up a forgotten orphan on the docks and canals of the city. Marco Polo did not have a conventional and happy childhood. His father left before he was born and his mother died when he was relatively young. But actually that relatively unhappy childhood provided him with certain skills that uh, w would turn out to be very important for him on his travels. He learned to get along with a wide variety of peoples. One day, Marco's world was turned upside down. A stranger walked into his life. It was his father. It was the first time the two had ever met. And the boy listened in awe as his father explained his 14-year absence. He said he had made an incredible overland journey to a magical land in the East. He talked about a foreign people, the Mongols, and their massive empire, the biggest the world had ever seen and explained how he had just risked his life to personally visit its capital in Cathay, modern-day China. Young Marco was stunned. 